Hello everyone. If you're new here, my name is Sari Sabban. I'm a molecular biologist and biotechnologist, and I develop artificial intelligence tools for computational biology and biomolecular simulations. I'm currently a Fulbright visiting scholar here at Duke University, and this is Bruce Donald's lab. And this is a tutorial about a library called The Pose that I developed here at Duke. If you want to use this library or stay up to date, follow my GitHub account and subscribe to this channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. The Pose is a bare metal Python library developed using NumPy for building and manipulating protein structures. It is very simple, lightweight, and fast. But I mainly built this library as a molecular environment engine or gaming engine, as a way to build molecular environments or games for reinforcement learning. My goal is to bring reinforcement learning to computational biology. So what are the benefits of this library? It is coded purely in Python, using only NumPy as the sole third-party library. So it's very stable, light, and fast. Second, the data structures are very clear because it's classic Python. The library uses arrays, lists, dictionaries, and JSON. Thus, the data can be easily manipulated to your liking. Third, the library can build canonical and non-canonical amino acids, and each amino acid can be built in L orientation or D orientation. In case you don't know the difference between L and D enantiomers, this is an L amino acid, L alanine which is the normal orientation found in biology. And this is D-amino acid, D-alanine, the chiral of L-alanine, which is very much the rare orientation in biology. Here is a non-canonical amino acid that is not within the natural 20 amino acids found in nature. It is called pyrolysine, PYL. By default, the library has 26 amino acids. 20 natural canonical amino acids and 6 non-natural non-canonical amino acids. I did this just to fill up all the letters in the English alphabet. But you can easily add your own custom non-natural, non-canonical amino acids and incorporate it into your design structures. I will show you how to do this at the end of the video. So using the pose library, you can build polypeptide chains using canonical and non-canonical amino acids and each with D or L enantiomers. Rotate torsion angles, rotate rotamers, adjust three atom angles, mutate residues, change bond angles, perform all kinds of measurements, and manipulate the atoms by simple linear algebra. Nothing programmatically complicated. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to do all of that. The Pose library gives you all the necessary building blocks to design and manipulate protein structures. And this should allow you to build other tools, structures, environments, or molecules quickly and efficiently and easily combine what you have built with other computational biology tools and libraries in the classic Pythonic way. This is version 1 of the library, so let me show you how it works. But before we start, an important note. The library uses zero-based indexing, rather than one-based indexing as in the PDB. This is to stay true to programming standards. Let's start. First of all, let's see how to install the environment. The link to the pose library is in the description. And there you will see that the installation process is very simple. And it is set up for both a virtual environment and a conda environment. For virtual environment, you only have to generate your own environment, then install normally using pip. pip install git plus the URL for the GitHub project. That is it. All the dependencies will be installed, which is basically only NumPy, along with the script itself and the default amino acids. For Anaconda, you basically just do the same thing, generate an environment, and install using the same pip command. To import the library, you just type from pose import everything. And if you run your code without errors, you know you are good to go. To start using the library, the first thing we do is call the pose class, pose equals pose with a capital P. You will see that all the methods for this library start with a capital letter to differentiate them from other Python methods and prevent clashes. Okay, let's start by building a simple straight polypeptide. We use the build method, pose.build, and your argument here is your polypeptide's FASTA sequence. In this case, it is only glycines. And then to visualize this molecule, we need to export it. We will use the export method, pose.export and its argument is the file name .pdb. If you are new to computational biology, you need to understand what is PyMol. PyMol is a different free software that visualizes the three-dimensional structures of molecules, 
not just proteins, but any molecule. We exported our molecule as a PDB, or Protein Data Bank, file format, which is one of the formats PyMol accepts. To install PyMol itself in Linux, you simply type apt install PyMol, but for a Mac and Windows, you have to download the installation file from its website. If you don't want to install PyMol, but still want to visualize the molecule, you can visualize it in a web browser. Go to rcsb.org, where you can upload and visualize a PDB structure. Back to our FASTA sequence, here is an important note. I mentioned that we can build canonical and non-canonical amino acids in both D and L orientations. How do we do that? Well, it's very simple. I have designed this pose library so that you can assign any letter to any amino acid that you want. That is why this library has 20 canonical amino acids in addition to 6 non-canonical amino acids, such as J, O, and X. Here's the point. If you use a capital letter for an amino acid in your FASTA sequence, regardless of whether it is canonical or non-canonical, the pose will build it as an L amino acid. And if you use a small letter for that amino acid in your FASTA sequence, regardless of whether it is canonical or non-canonical amino acid, the pose will build it as a D amino acid. And you can mix them up within the same sequence. So you can have a sequence with both D and L amino acids. You can see here, I am building a sequence of alanines in both D and L orientations. And here is a polypeptide that contains both D and L alanines. What if we want to import a structure from the PDB? It's very simple. You can import any PDB structure using the import method, which takes a file name as an argument, only in PDB format. You can also specify which chain to import in a multi-chain structure. Note that only the polypeptide is important without any water nor small molecules. No small molecules such as ligands nor heme groups. Here we see that both the original and imported structures are the same. What if we want to mutate one of these residues? It's very simple. We use the mutate method and the arguments will be the position of the residue we want to mutate and the Unicode of the new residue. Remember that the library, including the residue indices, are zero base indexed. Remember also capital letters will mutate to an L amino acid and a small letter will mutate into a D amino acid. So the zero here represents the first position and the one represents the second position. Therefore, we are mutating the second glycine into an L valine. What if we want to perform some measurements, such as measuring torsion angles and rotomers? Well, we can use the angle method, which takes the index of the residue and the type of angle as arguments. Here, let's measure the phi angle of the residue with index 2. In other words, the third residue. We can do the same thing for the phi angle by changing the angle string. For chi angles, we need to add an additional argument that specifies which chi angle, such as chi 1 or 2, etc. We can modify these angles using the rotate method, which takes residue index, new final angle value, and type of angle as arguments. And with the chi angle, we need to add the number of the angle as an additional argument. We can also measure the angle between three atoms using the atom three angle method, which takes atom one's residue index and the PDB atom's identity, Atom 2's residue index and the PDB atom's identity, and finally, Atom 3's residue index and the PDB atom's identity, as arguments. These atoms do not need to be in sequence. It can be between any three atoms within the entire polypeptide molecule.
We can also modify this angle using the rotate three angle method, which follows the same argument logic. But the value of the angle is not the final angle value, rather by how much we want to change it by. In other words, we want to increase it or decrease it by how much degrees. For example, here we have an angle of 111.2 degrees and we want to change it by positive 5 degrees, i.e. we want to increase it by 5 degrees to become 116.2 degrees. This is a very important difference when using this method compared to the rotate method for torsions and rotomers. We can also measure the distance between any two atoms using the distance method, which takes atom 1's residue index and the PDB atom's identity, and atom 2's residue index and the PDB atom's identity. Remember, you can measure the distance between any two atoms within the polypeptide. And if you measure the distance between two bonded atoms, you effectively measure the bond length. You can also adjust this distance using the adjust method, which takes the same argument logic. Atom 1's residue index and the PDB atom identity, atom 2's residue index and the PDB atom identity, and the final distance value between them. An important note here is that the order of the atoms is very important. Here is a method called get bond atoms, which takes the index of atoms from the coordinates, not residues, and returns the element name and PDB identity if these two atoms are bonded. Another important method, which you will probably use extensively to build molecular environments, is the get atom method, which takes residue index and atoms PDB identity as arguments and returns the XYZ coordinates of this atom. You will use this method a lot to get atom coordinates as points in three-dimensional space and extrapolate vectors from them and apply linear algebra onto your environment. What if you want to get a list of all the atoms in the polypeptide molecule? You can use the atom list method with the argument PDB equals true to return a list of all atoms in the molecule as PDB identities. But if you use the atom list method with no arguments, it will return a list of all the atoms in the molecule as elements. Now what if you want to identify a specific index in the coordinates array? We will see in a bit what is this coordinates array. You can use the identify method, which takes an index as an argument along with an identity string. Do you want to identify the atom of this index or the residue that this index belongs to? So you can choose the string atom, which returns the PDB identity of the atom at this index, or the string residue, which will return the amino acid symbol this index belongs to. You can also use the string amino acid, which will give you the same result as if you use the string residue. With the string atom, you can also add Q equals true to return the atom's charge of the specified index. There is a method called secondary structures that takes no arguments, which should print out the secondary structure that each amino acid belongs to. At this moment, it only returns loops. But in the future, I am planning to incorporate the DSSP algorithm to calculate the secondary structures of the polypeptide. This is for version 2. If you looked at the data structure of the molecule, you will see a lot of information. To print out a readable summary of this information, you can use the info method, which takes no arguments. What if you want to access each info in the molecule's data structure? Well, the data structure is a JSON, so simply print it or parse it the way you would parse a Python dictionary. Simply use pose.data and the dictionary keystrings. 
You see here all the details of this data structure. The energy is zero for now as a placeholder because I have not yet implemented an energy function to calculate it. That is for version two. You can also see the radius of gyration, the mass in Daltons, the length size in number of amino acids, and the faster sequence. You can also see all the amino acids, which is a dictionary where each key is an amino acid index and the value is a list describing that amino acid, where you see the amino acid symbol, chain, backbone atom indices, side chain atom indices, and the secondary structure the amino acid belongs to. Then you have all the atoms, which is also a dictionary where each key is the atom index and the value is a list describing that atom, where you have the atom's PDB identity, element symbol, charge, and the temperature factor. Then you have the bond graph, which tells you which atom indices are bonded together and is represented as an adjacency list. Finally, you have the coordinates array, which is atoms in rows and XYZ coordinates in columns. Hopefully this gives you the freedom to manipulate the molecule and transfer it between libraries at your convenience. Here you can see how you can print each individual key from the molecule's JSON data structure. Now let's talk about adding your own custom non-canonical amino acids. This library comes with all 20 natural canonical amino acids such as glycine, tryptophan, valine, alanine, etc. And you can build these in both D and L orientations. But I have also added six non-canonical amino acids which are B, J, O, U, X, and Z. That way the full English alphabets are used. But what if you want to incorporate your own non-canonical amino acid? How can you add it to the library? Well, first, let's take a look at the amino acid data structure found in the posed amino acid.json file. As you can see, it is a JSON data structure, and it is very simple. You have the Unicode of the amino acid as the main key, the vectors of the coordinate position for each atom in the side chain, only the side chain, the tricode of the amino acid, the atom list, the chi angles, and finally, the bond graph. This defines only the side chain because the backbone is defined separately, and since the backbone is the same for all amino acids, canonical and non-canonical, you don't have to worry about it. So, if you provide this information, your amino acid is imported to the library and can be used by it. Here is a script that can semi-automatically build one amino acid sidechain parameters for you. First, go to the RCSB database or any other database and download the CIF file format of your amino acid. It must be the CIF file because it contains the bond structure of the molecule. Unfortunately, because of the nature of the CIF file, there isn't really a unified standard for the names and orders of the atoms. Therefore, there has to be some manual input from you to complete the amino acid parameterization. If you go to the pose directory, you will find the parameterize.py script. You will need to get the script out of the library and use it independently because you have to change some parts of it. First, identify the CIF file of your amino acid. Then you have to assign to your amino acid a one letter symbol. The tricode will be extracted from the CIF file itself. So change it there if you want it to be different. Since all English letters are used in the library, you will have to either replace existing letters or use different symbols for your custom amino acids one letter symbol. This one letter symbol is what will be used in the faster sequence to build your polypeptide. Now go down to line 78. Here we have to manually order the atoms. The atoms in the CIF file can be in different orders. Now, the PDB convention is to have all the heavy atoms of a particular amino acid listed first, then followed by the hydrogen atoms of that amino acid. But the POSE library uses a slightly different standard, where each heavy atom is followed by the hydrogens that are bonded to it. So you have to order the atoms using the pose library standard. The first atom is nitrogen, then hydrogen one, hydrogen two, hydrogen three, the hydrogens that are bonded to the nitrogen, then the carbon alpha, then the carbon alpha's hydrogen, etc. You have to order all the atoms for the backbone and the side chain. Even though we are only extracting the side chain, we still need everything to be in order. Once you order the atom indices of the CIF file, then you can run the script to output the JSON format of the amino acid sidechain, which is what you want to add to the amino acid.json file. The final thing you have to do is to identify and manually add the bonds of each chi angle. So I hope this is not so confusing. <laughs> um, 
If it is, I'll either make a separate video that gives you more details, or just communicate with me and I'll add the amino acid for you. So, I hope this tutorial was useful. This is only version 1 of the library. As you can see here, there are additional functions that I would like to add to version 2. So I am open to collaborate if anyone wants to work together and build this library further. Thank you for watching.